and welcome to today's video. In today's video we're going to be taking my RISC PC 600 and we're going to be upgrading it to RISC OS 3.7. So I got this uh, package here sent to me from CJE Micros who still supply and certainly did in the old days actually still supply what appears to be new old stock um, items suitable for Acorn computers. This is actually a later one as it's got the Acorn Risk Technologies branding. Uh, it's a part number ART11, which is a very Acornish, Acorny part number. It says it's for use only with the strong arm upgrade, although it should work with the ARM 610 I've got. So at the moment, my machine is running Risk OS 3.5, so I want to get it up to 3.7. Because uh, 3.6 onwards supported larger hard disks. So we've actually got the upgrade instructions. And what we're going to do is we'll just check the pack, make sure what we have is present and correct. So we've got the two ROM chips, we have installation floppies, for the two ROM chips, installation floppies, and also an installation compact disk, which will prove useful. So first thing that we need to do is we need to well get the machine onto the table so just reach over to where my machine is stored and carefully extract it from storage and gently bring it over and pop it onto the bench and there we go one thing it will need to do is raise up the camera a little bit. There we go. And focus in on the areas that we need to look at. So, first thing is to remove the lid. Because we're going to need to get down into the machine. Actually, no, we don't. I thought we might need to remove um, the actual case layer, but the ROMs are within easy view there, easy access. You can get specific tools which allow you to pick out uh, the chips. However, if I move the processor board out of the way, I've got even more access to it now. So we'll put that to one side. We will take a suitable flat prizing object, gently prize it out. Which we will sort out now. As I say, you can get specific tools to do this, but if you're careful, you should be able to use, if you're very gentle, you should be able to use a flat blade screwdriver, which isn't the best idea. However, it's not going to do too much harm, hopefully. So, let's start with the S end. So this is 3.5. Ideally, I want to keep these 3.5 ROMs because I have a use for them somewhere else. Also, it will support this 16-bit sound upgrade as well without the need for extra drivers so actually to make it safer I am going to take this off so we'll pop out those pop out those gently move that out of the way and now we have or certainly should have access to the ROMs so we'll start with this end and this one taking great care not almost beginning to go up Use something a little bit thinner to get into there. So 
So, I'm going to just get these chips out. So both chips have been removed. As you can see, we have them here. So what we're going to do is we're going to move those to one side. Ideally, you should be wearing either an anti-static wrist strap or occasionally earth yourself to something such as a radiator if you don't have an anti-wrist strap available. So this will be the first time that this has actually been taken out of its box, potentially. It is quite possible, actually, that this has been used previously, which is more likely, but somebody's obviously kept the box in good shape. There we go, there's our two chips. We've got the CD there as well. So let's bring the two chips into view. So we've got the two part numbers, 60408E and 60474E-1. Now there is an order into which these go into the machine. And it is very important that we follow said order. So we will need to consult the instruction manual. So let's just move this out of the way, so I've got a feeling I may have gone down. No, it's not on there. So, instruction manual is somewhere around. Let's see if we can find it quickly. There it is. So, the instruction manual states that we need to install, there we go, we've got the actual part numbers on there, it tells us the ones we need to install. So 1203191XX, so 1203191XX, 1203191. Okay, that, this chip here, will go into that socket there. So, first off, check all of the pins are in place, which they are. 19101 will take off of the pad. And make sure that the orientation is correct. There are a couple of notches on these dips which will give you an idea. And there we go. Let's do the second one. So that's 19201 goes into ROM socket 2. There we go, it does it. There we go. And both of those are in. Quick press to make sure they're firmly home. And then we can put back the case slice, like so, so that's back in place. We can put our CPU card back in. So CPU card, like so. And our case pins. There's one. Two. We'll take the lid for three and four. So lid, oh, other way. In at the front, down, pop it in a bit more at the front, like so, and down. And there we go. So we've got three dot fives here. I'm going to reuse this rather useful pad and pop those back into there because we'll reuse those a little bit later. What we need now is either, actually we'll take up both, so we'll get the CD ready, but we'll also, in fact they don't look like they've ever been opened. So I'm going to try and see if we can actually do it with the CD. Do we need the floppy disk? That's the next question. Let's have a look at the instructions. 
So configuring your system, reconfigure, maybe TCP IP, well that's useful. Um, well that is good, it's actually got the TCP IP stack built in possibly, that's going to be handy. Install the new hard disk image from the floppy disks supplied. Okay, so we might need those floppy disks after all. So, let's grab those out of the pack. Okay, they may have actually been rewrapped. Just for the sake of it. There we are, there's our floppies. Break that off a little bit and take those out. I can actually reuse that. So it does look like it's been used, it's just these have been put back rather well. There we go. So we've got our old 3.5s, we've got our CD, we've got the floppies, and it looks like we're ready to go. We've got the box over here as well, which is actually a really nicely designed piece of packaging. Fold out. Fold out, fold in, in, over, clamshell together, and done. Right, let's get this powered up, connected up, and let's see what's what. Here we go, so we're ready to get started. Now, let's go back to the manual again, let's see what we need to do. So let's imagine we've made our software backups, we've put the ROMs in, so we need to go to st section 4, is that page 4? No, nope, section 4, which is restart your computer with factory CMOS RAM settings, that's on page 9 apparently, so if we go to page 9, we've installed Restarting the computer, restart the computer, hold down the delete key and switch on the computer, keep it down until the desktop appears. So, holding down the delete key, delete key is held down. Oh, yeah, the monitor's done something, that's good. So, oh, look at that, Risk OS 3.7. Expected, so I can actually release the delete key. So it doesn't recognize the mouse anymore because it's a serial mouse as opposed to a quadrature, quadrature mouse. So reconfiguring the system, double click on boot and use configure to customize any settings. We can't do that, so we'll do supervisor and configure mouse type one, I think. And quit. Exit. Ah, uh, desktop. Windows Manager on use. Uh, supervisor. Is it F12 again? No, it's not. Ah, uh, I've forgotten how to do it. I used to know how to do this. I had to get back to the desktop. Um, it's not quit. Yes, it is quit. It's quit plus enter again. Okay, there we are. We've now got the mouse back. So, what we can do now is reconfigure your network settings, reconfigure the system. So, I can actually reconfigure my system. I go into apps and configure, which I thought was around there somewhere. That, oh, hang on a minute. Is it on the hard disk? Apps. Nope, it's not in there. So reconfiguring system. Oh yes, you've got to double click on boot. That's it. So into there, double click on boot. And yeah, configuration. So screen. Currently set to auto. We are going to set the resolution 
to we'll pretend that this is an Acorn AKF 60. We will go to 800 by 600 because we've got one meg of video RAM. We can go to 32k colors. We'll do a try. Actually, set. Hopefully, this will work. Yep, the screen has decided what it wants to do, so that's good. We are now running in 800 by 600. It's amazing that this unbelievably modern monitor seems to work quite happily. <laughs> That really does surprise me. Right, reconfiguring your network settings. We unfortunately don't have any network card installed. That is on the case. I don't currently have any sound either. That might be because I need to plug in. Might be because I need to plug headphones into it. Not to worry, we'll see what the score is in a moment. So, we can run through and skip all of the bit about networks, because we don't currently have a network card, which I would love to get installed on this, actually. And reconfiguring your printing settings. Updating AR Movie. So, AR Movie has been updated to include some features previously only shipped with the Replay Starter Kit. So, floppy disk is actually provided. Oh, if you have a Kumiana CD ROM for the IDE bus, then before restoring boot IDE CD to the current, uh, you must edit the file boot IDE CD. Boot. Yeah, of course it is. So we'll need to work out how to get the CD ROM back on there in a second. Um, this is to prevent loading ADFS patch. Right, let's start with these floppies and see what we have. So, disk one. So, on disk one, ah, we got the README Advanced App Note. Let's have a look at the README. Let's open it in whatever the text editor was called. I can't remember the text editor was simply called Edit. Yep, that was it, that was it. So, let's have a look. Ah, there we are. So, the items covered in this readme are removing the old ROMs, Humana CD-ROM drives patching, 16-bit sound card, monitor definition, slideshow, etc, etc. So, the old ROMs have been removed. You can get the tool which I didn't have, I just managed to remove them by prizing them slightly. 16-bit sound card. Ah, if you no longer have 16-bit sound after installing the strong arm, you will need to press F12. Configure sound system 16-bit. Okay, so configure sound system 16-bit. Press enter and then restart using control break. There we go. Oh, we've got a beep. That's more than I've had out of the sound on this for a while, actually, so we've got a beep out of it. Cool. I've never actually used one of these with 16-bit sounds. This is actually quite exciting to see exactly what it's like. So let's get the floppy open. It's under advance. I think that, let's have a look at the readme for that as well. Advance is, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure. I'm sure we will find out. Let's go to installer.
this is one thing I really like about um, RISC OS. All of the applications have executable applications have an exclamation mark before them. Um, if I remember rightly, it's a it is a directory in its own right. So underneath there are a selection of files that actually make this program work. So I did try, try creating a few of them when I was younger without much success, but that's something that I can work on now that I've got the machine. So, keep old resources active, make new resources active, move old resources to an inactive directory. Let's do that. Your computer is already running RISC-OS 3.7, so it is likely that your currently active disk resources are sufficient. If you proceed, precede. If you do precede, it should be proceed, then the computer will shut down after installation. So please ensure that you save any work in other applications now. Here we go. So let's let this go through, and I'll see you on the other side. So we've just installed the uh, floppy disks and we are now back here at the desktop. So let's go into boot and see if anything's changed. Oh, look at that, we've got the network. Cool. That probably won't work as well. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Oh, that's brilliant. Excellent. Oh. Fantastic, so it's actually got its own TCP IP stack, that's wonderful. Uh, nothing as regards the CD-ROM at the moment, however I think we do have some sound going on. Um, let's have a look, where are those clips? Blimey, this takes me back because actually people have got uh, files in here. So the hard drive in this was actually out of an education machine, so it looks like we do have quite a few applications in here from education. Oh my world, I remember that. This is my world too, so... Oh god, it was that. Yeah. Yes, I remember. What else has it got? Um, oh, it had a camera app on there as well for a digital camera, I guess. Selection of games, I think Starfighter 3000 the demo is on here. I did have at one point the full version of that, so there are quite a few games in there. I thought I had some video files as well. Uh, video launch. That's actually a lot better than um, I remember, the sound wise, sound wise that is. Anyway, that's that. Um, artworks. Oh, I remember this. These are the um, artworks. Was an application, art application you could get, and use AW Viewer, if I recall. My computer concepts. Oh yeah, you could do that. I think. Could you do this? Yes, you could. Oh, that takes me back. So, for some reason, it's actually in 256 colours. I wonder why that is. Cars are in a 256 colour mode. Okay, let's go to 32k colours. That's better. There we go. When this was new, this was blisteringly fast. It's slow by today's standards, but we are talking 25 years later. But 25 years ago, this speed of refresh was insanely quick. It's actually even, obviously it's predictably a heck of a lot faster with the strong arm. But 
even with the arm 610 it's not bad not bad at all midget oh i think that was if i remember correctly an mg midget so if i go into yep yeah, there it is an mg midget SBL 973S, who knows, that could actually be a genuine registration. And there it is. Zoom in. Zoom out. Must be a bit of a piece of artwork actually. Midget logo on the side, row stars. It's a rubber bumper one as well, by the looks of it. But yeah, artworks was pretty good. Anyway, so next time I'm going to actually get hold of the drivers. I'm debating whether to put the larger drive back in or just keep it with a small drive, which seems to be sort of working well enough. Anyway, for the moment, I'd like to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Don't forget to link, like, subscribe, and all of that stuff. Anyway, see you soon.